Have you ever wonder how aeroplanes from different country follow the same rules and navigate without any confusion? It's not coincidence. It's a result of decades of coordination for the formation of international aviation rules and standards. In this video, we will uncover the fascinating history of how these rules came to be. And trust me, by the end of this video, you will never look back into the eight space travel the same way. To understand how this aviation rules were started, we need to go back to the early 90s. In those times, the planes were rare, and there was no particular rules how they need to fly nor how they need to operate. As the aviation technology advanced, more planes was been flew in different countries, but there was no global rules, which led to things getting confused. For example, whose airspace was it if you fly in different country? Can a foreign country plane land in our country without any permission? These sort of questions made things confusing, which made them realize they need to hold a systematic order to ensure the safety and the conflicts. In early 1990s, the Paris Convention marked the first step to the global aviation rules. It introduced the idea that the country owned their airspace above their territory, with a basic safety guidelines for the plane and the pilot and also a proper framework for a country to share the weather and navigation details. But while it was a start, it was not enough. Aviation was growing too fast for the basic rules to be handled. This brings us to the major step, one that completely transformed aviation forever. By the 1940s, aviation had become critical for trade, travel, and the military operation during the World War II. By then, countries realized they need a strong, organized approach to govern the international aviation. In 1944, delegates from 52 countries gathered at Chicago to form Chicago Convention, which was a landmark agreement which shapes the aviation till date. So, what made the convention so revolutionary? Let's understand. Number one, it established International Civil Aviation Organization, which acts as a global aviation revolution. It introduced five freedom of air, the right which makes international flight possible today. For example, the planes can fly over other countries without landing. They can land over other countries for technical reason, like refueling, etc. They can pick up and drop off passengers from different country to their home country. These freedoms made air travel across the border seamless and efficient. But Chicago Convention wasn't just about creating rules. It was about setting a foundation for the global cooperation in aviation. When the international flights became more common, the focus shifted on the safety. After all, flying over long distance and multiple countries require clear and universal rules. This is where ICAO introduced something called SARPAS. Nothing but standards and recommended practices. These are the guidelines that ensure pilot, airplane, airport meet the same safety standards worldwide. For example, pilot must be licensed and regularly trained. Planes must be inspected and maintained to strict standards. Airports must have proper lighting, runway and emergency systems. Through this standard set of rules, aviation has become the safest mode of transport. But aviation isn't just about safety, it's about making the air travel convenient and efficient for everybody. That's where the next big development came in. In 1970s, the aviation industry changed again. Governments realized the strict regulations were holding back the growth of aviation. So they introduced a new regulation called Open Skies. Open skies allowed airlines to operate more freely with reduced cost and more of competition. This led to cheapest tickets and more flights, making air travel accessible for millions of people worldwide. Flying in 1960s was more expensive and it was reserved for the wealthy people. But in 1980s, budget airlines made flying affordable for everyone. Every time you fly, you have been benefited from centuries of international cooperation. These rules make sure your flights are safe 
efficient and reliable so that's all from my side today guys if you enjoyed learning about the history and evolution of aviation rules then please do let us know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video